Hi, welcome to my SQL bit session on a Python primer for DBAs. Uh, I am Andre Kaman. I'm, uh, I'm from Amsterdam. Uh, data platform MVP since 2009, work in IT for over 30 years. I work with SQL Server. I am a big fan of PowerShell, but also a Python student. So um, from that perspective, I would like to show you uh, just in 20 minutes, just really quickly, how you can do uh, some really simple code to do some really powerful stuff in Python. Uh, let's dive right in. So my example that I chose is uh, not about the Python that you would have in SQL Server to do machine learning with. This is not that. This is just Python that you write from the outside in a, uh, in, in my case, in VS Code. Um, there's many ways to do that. I'm not going to go into how to install uh, all these things. There are so many, um, there's so many information about that. I am just going to write mostly copy paste some, um, some, some quick code to show you, uh, how to build, build something really powerful in under 20 minutes, uh, that I think PowerShell won't do that fast. Let's see, uh, fight me on that one. Let's, let's see what you think. I'm using a couple of libraries that you need to install uh, in Python with the pip command uh, before you can use this. Uh, I'm using PyODBC, argparse, logging, and I'm using a few other things like CSV and datetime, but those are already included in the standard Python library, but you need to install these via the pip command. Let's dive into some code, shall we? So the first thing we'll do is as a proper command, a proper uh, command line thing, we need some arguments on the command line with some checking if these arguments are correct. So all we need to do is import the arc parse uh, library and then add a few um, arguments. I'm going to add four of these arguments first to show you how this works and we'll add a few more uh, later. Uh, this is actually all you need to do. You have to Call them as well. Let's put that code in there right away as well. This basically concludes your argument uh, selection, so your command line entries. Uh, it will ask for a SQL Server, a database, a table, and an output file in that order. And um, let's add two more actually. That will make this a bit more specific. Um, so, what we also are also doing is putting in some logging. And the, uh, sometimes you don't want the logging, so I'm going to build in a quiet switch. Um, so this works as a switch because it stores the ac stores true as an action in this in this command. Um, and there's also the progress indicator value that, uh, by default, it will show every 10 million rows um, as a, as an output. I've exported 10 million rows. Uh, sometimes you want to change that. Um, that indicator value to something else, and I've built that in as well. This is an integer type, and the default is 10 million. How does that work? Well, pretty simple. If I if I go to the command line and I don't type anything, I just call the program, it will complain. You've, you're missing the required uh, parameters. There's also a few that are not required, but at least these four it needs. And I can also do dash h or dash dash help to get some more information. That was pretty quick, huh? Um, let's dive into some more code and actually use these arguments as well. So what our program also needs is, uh, uh, we'll add some start and end time information. And for, uh, this is actually also, uh, the date time is also coming from an external library. So I need to import that as well. And instead of importing date, time, I will import from date time library, I will, Im I will import the date time function. It, it, or else I would have to type date time dot date time all the time, which is a lot of time. Um, so now it understands date time dot now, so I can put my start time in my script, all good. Uh, because we are also going to use some logging in this thing, uh, I need to import the logging library as well. And for later on, I also need PyODBC to talk to Python. 
as to I have Python Torque to SQL Server and I want to export to CSV, so I need the CSV library as well. This uh, to make it complete. This is all we're gonna need. Now, to start the uh, logging, we need to um, configure it a bit. If out of the box, it's pretty well configured, but I stole this, um, these commands that I show you here uh, from another program that will um, make the formatting nice for the logging, and it's really easy to use. Uh, I'll show you here. So for the connecting to the database, I wanna show a, um, a message on the screen connecting to database blah on SQL Server blah. And this is all you have to do. And because we added the quiet parameter here and stored it in the um, here and stored it in the quiet variable, all I have to do is if not quiet login.info. So if I add quiet to the end of the command line, you won't see this. If I don't, you will see all the logging and we'll see how this works later. So to connect to SQL Server, I need a connection, obviously. And the connection, we we're building the connection like this. Uh, we need a driver, a server, a database, and we need to tell it, uh, this is an ODBC connection string, right? You've seen it before maybe. And we need to tell it that it does Windows authentication and we're not supporting anything else. Your username, password, people just know. Um, which drivers do you have? Well, it's an easy check for that. Uh, this is the simplest Python program I've ever seen. Uh, import PyODBC and just go for driver in PyODBC.drivers, print the driver. And if I run that, you will see here that it just shows you all the drivers that are available on the system. Pretty cool, huh? Also, you notice um, I've just written a loop and PowerShell people might just might wonder now, where are the brackets? Uh, there aren't any. The uh, indentation has meaning in Python. How cool is that? Some people are, I just go, that's not cool at all. I like it, I, it works for me. Anyway, let's go try, let's, let's go back to the code. And so I've got my connection string now and all, and what I need now is a query to get the column names and a query to get the data from the table, right? So let's put those query strings in here. So these are format strings. You can see here, I'm, I'm saying query is select star from table. And what I put in that table between brackets is this format Table is arguments.table and arguments.table is what we entered here as on the command line. That's all I did. The metadata query, same thing. I'm doing a column name, the columns, the sys.tables join columns, blah, to get, to get the column names in the right order and also putting in the table there. So far, so good. Now we can uh, quickly log that we are starting uh, with getting the column names. And now I'll type this out for dramatic effect. It, it, SQL Server people, don't be scared. But here we go. Cursor is um, connection dot cursor. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, that scared me the f as well the first time I saw it. Um, I've profiled it. It's not a cursor as we know it. Don't worry. It's just a normal query. It is called a cursor here. It is not the cursor as w that we fear. Don't worry about it. Just you, You're fine. Just the name cursor shocked me as well in the beginning. You don't need to worry. So all we need to do is um, create a cursor, uh, execute it with the query, uh, with the uh, meta query in it, and um, I'm going to show you two different ways of uh, exporting them to a file. First, I need to open the file. That would be a uh, simple create a file handle. You, um, you, you give it the output file uh, name so it knows which file you open it for write. It's Unicode. Um, there are a lot of options that, to play with, but this is the simplest one to create a CSV that uh, that works well. Uh, there are also some options that you need in the writer, the, um, the the thing that writes to the file. It needs to know the quoting that we're doing. And I'm using quote minimal. I love that thing. Um, it will only use quoting on a text column 
if it needs to, uh, and because the the quote because there might be a quote in the text, so it out it quotes it out, and also the escaping is done correctly, and it only uses it when it's needed. Uh, might sound weird to have it optional. This this might differ per per um, column and per li per line in your CSV file. I've tried this with the bulk insert and I've tried this with polybase. They understand it. Works fine. Um, ADF, no problem. So I like it. It's, I, you don't have to think about it. It just works. No uh, messy quoting, uh, escaping. It handles it for you. I, I like it a lot. So now we need to write the, uh, to create, now we need to create a header. And uh, this is you could, if you create a hard-coded header or some uh, collection in PowerShell, in Python, sorry, um, you could do this. You could say header is ID, name, etc. Right? Uh, write it like a collection and then export that. Um, and the funny part is, I don't even have to write a loop here. The loop can be inside the brackets that make the collection. That, this is so weird. And there's a bunch of filtering options as well. But uh, look at this row dot column name for row in cursor. That's it. That, that, that's a piece of code inside the brackets that create these things. Uh, pretty cool. Um, now, we want to write the header to the file first. We've already opened the file here. So let's write the header uh, with a little message above. It's all just write row header. That's all you need to do, and some and some logging. Uh, so now we can add, we can run the cursor, sorry, <laughs> the query for the for the rest of the data, right? So that's what this does. Just execute the other one, and uh, we'll 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 add a row counter. So we can do some uh, some nice uh, progress stuff, and basically the whole thing to export looks like this. You just do a for row in cursor uh, with a colon at the end, and then have an indentation, and you write the row. You don't have to go through the columns and add the delimiter or the the column separator or anything. Just throw it in there, it figures it out. This is so cool and so fast. Um, we're adding one to the row counter. This is a mod argument. We've probably as DBA has done this before and if we use uh, PowerShell a lot, we've maybe done this for uh, progress indicators. Uh, so this will every one million or every 10 millionth row right now because that's the default, but I can start it with a different argument. Uh, we'll get also, if we didn't put the quiet argument in um, and export it so many rows, uh, and that's basically it. This exports it to file already. Huh? Cool, huh? Now, only thing is left is just a small. Uh, let's do the end of the end time as well, the elapsed time. So, because we have the daytime functions, it understands this. You can do uh, datetime dot now minus the start time, which was also a daytime object. So it understands it, brings it to a nice format, and in the end, we can also log that, and we're done. <laughs> Already, uh, that's it. That's all we need to do. And this is quite elaborated with. Uh, uh, with command line arguments and logging and 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 such, you you could even do it without. Uh, if you wanted to do some hard coding stuff, I'm I'm sure you can be you can do this in like five rows or something. Let's see if it works, right? Might have made some copy paste mistakes. All right. So what I need to do is run this thing, but with the SQL Server that we want to use. The database is Stack Overflow. The the table that I'm going to use is uh, post types to start with, nice and small. And the output file would be the output post types dot csv. See if it's already there. It's empty. Run this thing. Okay. 
eight rows. Nobody's impressed. Uh, let's see. File is there. Let's. So I've opened it in uh, Notepad++ and as you can see, if I zoom in here, that's my file. Only eight rows. The header is nicely there. Um, and if I run it with the uh, progress indicator, that was the dash P, and I'll do two. It will do it again and it will show you nice progress. Okay, that works. How about the, uh, the quiet mode? Ooh, works nicely, huh? Um, so, I said in the beginning that this would be just as fast as, uh, as SSIS, right? Uh, let's take a bigger, um, let's take a bigger table. Let's put this to um, 100,000 and do, uh, what do we do with the users table? About 11 million users, I think. Uh, about the gigabyte of data users. I think this is 11 million. So let's, uh, let's write this thing and see how fast this goes. Not bad, huh? Uh, trust me, I've compared this with SSIS and uh, it's about the same speed. And I've tried many things in, uh, uh, in SQL Server, uh, uh, sorry, in PowerShell, and it's just no way. Um, this is the, the bottleneck in PowerShell uh, is uh, exporting to a file. File handling is just, it's just not there. Uh, Maybe somebody can prove me wrong, looking at you, Rob, but uh, <laughs> um, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you think. I should be, if you're watching this live on uh, SQL Bits, uh, I should be in the comments thingy somewhere. Um, <laughs> I'm doing comments like this. I'm watching YouTube way too much. Um, so let me know, uh, happy to help. The, oh yes, and the code itself. I've uh, taken the code that you just saw and I've created a GitHub gist. So if you just go to uh, GitHub to Andre Kaman slash pbcp.py, you should find it there. It's exact code that you just saw me uh, copy, uh, copy paste into my thing. I copy pasted it before into the gist. So it's exactly the same code. Tinker with it, see if you like it, use it whichever you, uh, way you want, obviously. And I hope it's, this uh, little session was useful for you. Now, if you want to get in touch with me, um, easiest way to find me is on uh, Twitter. I don't blog a lot. Maybe I should pick that up someday, but mm, uh, we've all got other things on our minds these days, don't we? Um, so easiest way to contact me is on Twitter, probably. You'll find me there. Hope you enjoyed it and um, hope you enjoyed SQL Bit so far, even though we're not live, we're not there. We can't have a little beer at the end of the day, unfortunately, um, but maybe Maybe next year. See you.